Hey guys, Coach Dylan here from Alan Durr's Coaching. Today, we're going to do the fourth in our series for stability ball circuit workouts. Um, and again, just kind of a quick refresher. The big purpose that we're looking for with these kinds of lifting is to work on core stability and muscle recruitment, and like neuromuscular fitness, all that stuff kind of all at once. Uh, typically, we do this as a circuit so that while one set of muscles is recovering from uh, a set, we can work another one and keep the heart rate elevated the whole time and get a little bit of that kind of endurance, cardiovascular uh, work that as endurance athletes, we need, right? We're always looking for it. So we might as well work it at it a little bit while we're lifting instead of doing straight sets uh, like power lifters or bodybuilders where you, know, where you spend the majority of your time sitting there twiddling your thumbs. There is a time and a place for that kind of lifting for endurance athletes, uh, but for stability lifting, we're not going heavy enough. We're not really frying the maximal power output into things. What we're really doing is working on our ability to keep everything stable while we're doing it and a little bit of muscular endurance at the same time. And so just like with a lot of other stuff we do, that means not a lot of rest in the middle of it, right? So we've done chest flies and back flies and hamstring curls. Today, we're gonna do some knee, knee pull-ins. Um, and yeah, these are a great way to challenge your ability to stabilize your shoulder for your cyclists and swimmers uh, and triathletes. This is a good one for you because it'll work on that shoulder girl stability while we're working our core uh, and just the whole core stability in general. But being able to hold a stable push-up position while rolling the ball in and out uh, with our feet is a good way to work not just the lower abs and like the hips and that kind of thing, but also the shoulder girdle and keeping things stable. That way when we're on the bike, we can keep things stable and the shoulder girdle is not going <laughs> to give out on us and where we end up with bad mechanics. Or for swimming, uh, when we're in the water, being able to have good range of motion and stabilize that shoulder through that whole pull and the recovery is important. Efficiency matters. Stability and mobility is a spectrum. And so being able to find the right spot on the spectrum for what we're trying to do is a large part of what we're trying to do, right? If we're too stable, we can't move. It restricts our range of motion. If we're too mobile, we can't actually generate any power because the thing we're pulling off of, in the case of our shoulders, it'd be like our spine and chest. Like, if it's flopping around, we can't generate any power, right? We're going to dump it, you know? And for being on the bike, this has to be stable for the bike to be stable, right? Otherwise, we're going to be flopping around and we're going to be dumping all kinds of power. And this is true for runners too. You know, we might as well keep this stable so we're not flopping all over the place while we're running and dumping energy, right? That upper body stability matters for all three disciplines. So, stability ball knee pull-ins. Here we go. All right, so here you can see me getting set up. I got my hands under my shoulders, just like any good chest press push mechanic, right? And get the ball back under my feet. We're good and stable. If you need to make it more unstable, get your feet right close together. If you need it more stable, get your feet a little wider apart. But we want a ball that's going to allow us to be essentially flat while we're in this push-up position and not at like an incline or a decline. And so notice I'm keeping, trying to keep a straight line from my shoulder to my hip. Yes, my hips are going to go up and down just because of physics, right? Because of the ball. And we're going to be on our toes as we roll it in and roll it out. And the big thing, though, is to keep that shoulder girdle stable and to breathe. So we're going to exhale as we roll in and inhale as we roll out and trying to keep that core stable the whole time. And this is actually a lot harder than it looks, especially if you mix it into a circuit with, uh, you know, the other stability ball lifting we've been doing where our core is already tired. So that's it in a real quick nutshell, guys. It's really essentially just working that lower core, which as runners we need because we need that lower core to be stable. You know, we need that hip to be, we need our hips to be stable and our pelvis to be stable. So when we run, we can. We work in that range of motion in our hip, bringing those knees all the way in, all the way out, stabilizing our core while we're doing it. And for cycling and swimming and for running, working on that shoulder girdle stability, keeping everything here stable so that when we're running or cycling or swimming, we're stable and we can generate power and we can move efficiently. So this is an excellent way, especially if you already have the ball out anyway, doing some other lifting on the ball, like the chest fly, you know, the chest flies, chest press, back flies, what have you. If you're using it anyway, 
you might as well use it for some of your core work. And instead of just doing like laying on your back and doing some leg lifts or knee pull-ins, flip over so you're in a push-up position and we can work on that shoulder girl at the same time. So until next time, train smart. Oh, 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 oh,